say hi. This is my Lau, <laughs> and she's gonna be in today's video. <laughs> hey everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. If you're new to my channel, my name is Melissa and I'm a nursing student. So now to get into the video, I just finished taking community health at Chamberlain University, um, which I believe is NR442. And technically I'm still taking it. I just took my final last night. So I'm done with the lecture portion of the class. I still have one more clinical to go to on Saturday. It's a 12 hour clinical, but I'm anticipating that I'm going to pass the class with a B plus. So I'm just really quickly gonna go over everything that I went through in the class and my experience taking the class. I'm actually filming this before work. I'm on my way out the door. I have my morning coffee. So this is kind of like a coffee and chat. And I have to leave soon, so this video is going to be very quick. I don't know if anybody out there is a Star um, Trek fan. I am not, but my husband is. And so this is his, um, I don't know if it'll focus. This is his mug, you see the Star Trek emblem. And then these guys, don't know who they are, but, but my husband is very into Star Trek. So I'm drinking my coffee out of his mug today. I actually got him this mug. So for those of you guys that are not familiar with what community health is, community health in very simple terms is basically any setting that is not the traditional like acute hospital care setting. So a community health nurse can work in a school. It could be a school nurse. A community health nurse can work in forensics where they can do an assessment on victims that have been abused and they can give their expertise in that area. A community health nurse can also work at a clinic or at like a religious organization giving health care to people in the congregation or a part of that community. So pretty much anything outside of your typical hospital bedside care setting could be classified as a community health nurse, just a nurse that is out in the community providing health care. So first I'm gonna talk about the clinical portion of the class, then I'll talk about the lecture. But before I even get into that, just my personal experience taking this class was really weird because I was separated from my cohort. If you saw, I think my last update video I mentioned, my schedule kind of got rearranged. So I'm still graduating in the spring of 2024, but the order of my classes has changed. So I've separated from my cohort, the people that I've been in school with this whole time, and I will be rejoining them in January. So for this past session taking community health, I was with the cohort, I think right in front of me. And so they graduate in December. And so they've been taking classes together for three years and they all know each other and I was just kind of dropped into the class as a random and nobody knew me and it was really really weird <laughs> it took me a while to kind of get the vibe of the cohort like my cohort I think is really close I love my cohort I've gotten really close to the people in my cohort when we go to clinical even when we go to class I kind of um, I like to sit in the front and I stay focused but you know during breaks I'll talk to people I'll be like hey how are your kids how's the husband how's the wife I'll talk about my family we'll talk about work um, when I go to clinical because clinical groups are like sometimes you'll be in a clinical group with like two other people or three other people so you really get really close to people and so I'm used to going to clinical early chit chatting with people we'll talk about just like life gossip anything this cohort was very different and I don't know, I guess every cohort has a different vibe. Um, it was it was different. No one was mean. Everyone was like friendly-ish. I don't know. I mean, they graduate in December, so I don't know if it's just kind of like they're so close to the end. They're not trying to chit chat, but like literally I went to clinical and before clinical, everyone was just kind of no one was trying to be my friend. <laughs> And at first I was just kind of like, what is up with these people? But after a while I kind of understood everyone, I think pretty much everyone in the class worked, everyone in my clinical I think worked full time. Like I had people literally coming off of a night shift. Instead of going home, they went straight to a 12 hour clinical. So I understand why they really weren't trying to chit chat with me, but it was just definitely an adjustment. I felt like the weird, like loner new kid who nobody was trying to be friends with, <laughs> but it was just it was definitely different but you know it was good because I was really focused on clinical and I was really focused on my lecture and I didn't have any distractions in that sense but you know it was different and the next session I'm gonna be I think I'm going backwards 
and I think I'm gonna be with the cohort behind me. So I'm gonna be with a whole new set of people. So hopefully my experience will be a little bit more friendly. But this one, the cohort, the vibe was just, the vibe was very different. So for clinical, this clinical was, this clinical was grueling. This was, I believe it was a 96 hour clinical. So I think you, I think you had to do 96 hours over the span of eight weeks, which equates to 12 hours a week. So I had to go to clinical every single week for 12 to 12 and a half hours. And my clinical this past session was in Virginia. I live in Maryland. So I had to travel over an hour to get to clinical, spend 12 to 12 and a half hours there, and then drive over an hour back. It was grueling. My clinical was in, um, it was in a rehab center. So it was not the hospital. Instead of a, an acute setting like the hospital, it was more of a subacute setting. And the skills that I did, I did wound care. Of course, I did assessments. Um, pretty much anything that you would think to do with patient care. And then my clinical instructor was amazing. She, she kind of also lectured a little bit. She taught us about like infection control, wound care, um, advanced directives. That's a huge thing in community health hospice care she, she taught us a lot we learned a lot in clinical and it was very hands-on but it was it was very grueling to i this was not the first clinical i think this is the second clinical because med surge was also 12 hours every eight like 12 hours for eight weeks um but this this clinical was intense i will say that and since I was in, it was like a nursing home slash rehab center, but more so a rehab center. So it was an older adult population that I was working with, which is considered to be a vulnerable population. So it was a pretty decent clinical, I would say. I had a really good experience. The knock on wood, I've only had one, I think, negative clinical experience. Other than that, I've gotten to work with really good staff and I've had pretty good clinical instructors. So my clinical was really straightforward. Seven out of the eight weeks, I actually went on site in Virginia to the rehab center and spent 12 to 12 and a half hours like on the units and doing clinical. And then one out of the eight weeks, so one week we went to SimLab. So instead of going to the rehab center for clinical, I went on campus we had um, like a case study scenario that we did the night before. We had questions we had to answer. And then we went to SimLab with our instructor. We went over that case study. We did like a simulated lab. So we got to work with the like high tech mannequins or the dummies in a controlled environment, a scenario. I'm not going to tell you guys what the scenario was. Obviously, it has to do with community health. I will say community health has a really big focus on like hospice care and advanced directives and patients' wishes. So that was kind of what my sim lab was geared towards, I will say, just typical community health stuff. After we did sim, we did the debriefing where we got to watch the video of us in the sim lab. We got told what we did right, what we did wrong, where we could improve. And then we went back to the classroom, did more debriefing, and we went over different skills. And again, we kind of, that's where we learned about advanced directives, patients' wishes, um, do not resuscitate, all of that stuff. So overall, I actually had a really good clinical experience. Sim lab I thought was fun and I learned a lot in clinical. Now when it comes to the lecture of this class, this lecture, and I get, a, a, I get questions a lot about um, my class schedule because a lot of people are looking at different programs, they're looking at Chamberlain, they can do only like evening and weekend classes and they wanna know what my class schedule is. I cannot stress this enough. At Chamberlain classes are eight weeks. So we have eight week sessions. So every eight weeks you're taking a new class, which means every eight weeks or every two months, your class schedule can change. So one session you could be going to campus one night a week for class. Another session you could be going to campus four nights a week for class. I think last summer I was going to campus like something like four nights a week for class and then I had clinical, it was ridiculous. So it just depends. This past session for community, my class was only once a week which I really enjoyed. <laughs> it was once a week, but it was a four hour class. That was also grueling. So between the 12 hour clinical that I had to go to every single week, and then having to sit in a classroom learning for four hours after spending eight hours at work, mentally and physically, it was exhausting. And this is the first time I think I've had only one class throughout the entire week, like one night where I had to go to campus. And I thought I wasn't gonna like it because I thought that I would have preferred 
going to campus two nights a week for two hours each rather than going to campus one night a week for like a long four hour class. I actually prefer going to campus one night a week for a long four hour class because that's only one night a week that I have to like have a really long day. It's only one night a week that I have to drive in 495 traffic to go to Virginia. So I actually liked it and then the it gave me more time to study actually which you know, I kind of have been getting like B minuses and C's in my classes because I've been so busy. But I think this session I was able to pull off a B plus. Really, I could have gotten an A, but I didn't study as hard as I should have for the final because I was busy. But I think I did well in this class because I only had one night a week where I had to go to campus. And then I had the rest of the week to study, review my notes, and honestly just rest. So yeah, all of that was to say I only had to go to campus one night a week. My class was from 6 p.m. to 9.50 but I just say 10. It was from 6 to 10 p.m. and I love this professor. I've had her before. I don't know if it's weird if I, Professor Morgan. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like I shouldn't name drop but I don't I don't know. I had Professor Morgan if you've had her um, you know you can comment down below if you liked her. Be nice if you you know didn't but I've had her before so one I like her as a person. Two I like her teaching style. And three, because I had her before, I kind of knew her style of teaching and so I was familiar with it. Usually for me, the first like two weeks of a class can be hard because you're trying to learn your professor's teaching style. Usually you'd be learning their exam style, but Chamberlain changed it so the professors are no longer creating the exams, which is weird, but whatever. But it was, it was easy for me to get into the groove of this class because I was familiar with this professor. I think I had her for adult health too, I think. But I had her a couple sessions ago, so I was already familiar with her, so for me that was easy. When it comes to exams, there are four exams in this class. Week one, night one, we had our med calc exam. In NR442, which is community health, you have to get 19 out of 20. There are 20 questions, you have to get at least 19 right in order to pass the class. If you cannot pass your med calc exam, you are dropped from the class, but you do have multiple chances to take it. So if you take the med calc exam the first time, you don't pass it. Whatever grade you get is what goes into the grade book and stays in the grade book. But then you're able to do remediation. You can retake the exam. And if you fail it a second time, I believe you have to do remediation again and you have one more time to take it. So you do have three chances to take it. The first grade is what's actually written in the grade book. If you cannot pass it on the third try, then you're dropped from the class, you're dropped from clinical, and you have to retake it at a later date. I will be completely honest. I think I failed my med calc exam. I think I got an 18 out of 20. <laughs> and so I had to do remediation and retake it, I believe. I can't remember, but yeah. So the med calc exam is the first exam. The second exam that you take in this class, which is weird, is exam one, even though it's your second exam. But exam one is taken in week four. And then in week seven, you have the CMS, which is a standardized exam. And then in week eight, what I just took yesterday, the fourth exam is exam two. So that is not a standardized exam. So that is your final. For the CMS, Chamberlain is getting rid of ATI. I may even make a separate video on that. So I think this is the last CMS I'm going to take. Don't know what it's going to be replaced with, but I did pretty decent on all of my exams. I think I passed all of my exams this session, which doesn't usually happen. Usually I fail the first exam. Um, even if it's by a couple of points, I you know fail it and then I kind of have to struggle the rest of the class to make it up. In this class, I passed all of my exams, including the CMS. I think I got a proficiency level two for those of you guys that care about that in my CMS. When it came to homework, we did have an RUA, which is a required uniform assignment. So an RUA is usually a paper that you have to write or a group project or a presentation. In this class, we had a group project and then we had to present it to the class. And I, you know, I'm not gonna tell you guys what the group project is about, but I will just say that it has to do with community health. I don't want to give away too much because I don't ever want to be in the realm of cheating, but it is very much related to the class and what you're learning in the class. So it's not like you just have this random assignment that's thrown in there. And then on top of that, the rest of the homework, you have your EDAPT assignments that you have to do each week. I think towards the beginning of the class, the EDAPTs were kind of heavy. And then towards the end of the class, the EDAPTs tapered off. 
So overall, I didn't find this course to be too heavy with the EDAPs. We also had three ATI assignments that we had to do. So ATI is another software that Chamberlain uses that they are discontinuing after this session. But we had to do three ATI assignments. And, and then along with the ATI assignments, we had to fill out um, like nursing templates. So like you would get a disease and you had to fill out a sheet of paper talking about the medication that you would take for the disease, the symptoms of the disease, the risk factors, all of that. So we had to do three of those throughout the course. And then in addition to that, we had our binder assignment. So for the ATI exam, if you don't go to Chamberlain, if you're not familiar, every session we have to take our proficiency exams. So we took a proficiency exam, that was the CMS that I mentioned that we took in week seven and that was the standardized exam before you take that you are supposed to take two practice exams so they don't go into the grade book but you take practice exam one just to gauge how you are with the subject and what areas you should study harder and then closer to the actual exam you take a second practice exam which is practice exam b it's a and b practice exam and so whatever you get on practice exam b whatever they say you need to do remediation on you have to literally hand write your remediation put it in a binder and then present that binder to your professor and that is graded so it's easy points if you do it it can be a lot of work especially if you score really low on the practice exam and you have a lot of remediation to do but it should be an easy a and just kind of helps you boost your grade and so that is pretty much it. Community health is very straightforward. Like I said, I got a B plus. I definitely could have studied harder for the final and pulled an A, but I think it's something, it's just, for some people it's easy. I heard some classmates saying that it was really difficult for them to grasp the concepts. Just like any class, it just depends on what your strengths and weaknesses are. From my background, I have a background in healthcare administration. I have worked in a nursing and rehab center. So I'm a little bit more familiar with community health and it was definitely easier for me. Next session, I'm going to be taking maternity, which is what I should have been taking this session. But next session, I'm going to be taking maternity. Definitely nervous about that because I've heard it's a difficult class and because I'm going to be with an even new cohort. So not my cohort, not the cohort that I was just taking a class with, but I think it's going to be the cohort behind me. I'm not sure. So the cohort in front of me that I just took community with, none of them knew me because I think typically people that watch my videos or at least my update videos are people in the cohort behind me because they want to know what to anticipate when they get to their classes. So since I was with the cohort ahead of me, I don't think anybody knew I did YouTube. So it's possible that there are going to be people in my maternity class that have seen my channel and the thought of that is mortifying. And then another reason why I'm kind of anxious to take this class is because my clinical is going to be like three hours away. So I need to figure out how I'm going to make that work. But I, you know, have a couple weeks to worry about that because clinical doesn't start until halfway through the course. But that is it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you made it to the end, I will see you in the next video.